Directed by Michael Chaves, this is the first of the Conjuring movies to not be directed by James Wan, aside from the spin-off films. And how will this affect this franchise that desperately needs some new air breathed into it? Let's find out. The Conjuring 3 The Devil Made Me Do It once again follows the Warren family as they try to prove that a murder committed by this man was caused as a result of demonic possession. The Conjuring franchise has been through a bit of a fluctuating period as of late over the last couple of years with some inconsistent entries, but the first two Conjuring movies are widely considered to be the best of these movies. So, with The Conjuring 3 The Devil Made Me Do It, aside from having a ridiculously long title, there was a lot of expectations going into this one, and unfortunately, it cannot reach the height of the original two movies. The main reason for this is there is a distinct lack of threat within this movie. Whilst it does continue the trend of showing us what's going to scare us before it's throwing loud noises at us, I think one of my favourite shots, which is unfortunately spoiled in the trailer, is that of the hand just slowly reaching round the tree. That is a nice visual. The jump scare ruins it a little bit, but it is a great visual. But like I've said, a lot of the threat is taken away. The whole demonic side of this franchise is very much stripped back in favour of a more close-to-home human element. And it would work in most horror movies, probably. However, the thing is, when you're basing an entire franchise on the case files of two well-renowned paranormal demonic investigators, you should really be aware that anyone that just does a quick Google search will know that these two both died of an old age. And when you try and make your movie have them as the main focal point and then being threatened more than the other characters within the film, you're going to lose a lot of threat within this. There is a particular sequence towards the finale of this that as much as it tries to be tense and lead to a dramatic moment, it fails in all counts purely on the fact that the majority of the audience knows that both of these characters are going to pull through unless they want to disrespect the dead and kill off them in a film about a real life event. There is a lot of issues if they would try to do that, especially as both the Warrens are now tragically passed on. Now, Patrick Wilson and Vera Flaminga are, as always, fantastic as the Warren couple. They are very much the only thing that holds this movie together. Whilst the paranormal investigation and the demonic occult research is let down by the fact it's less of a demonic threat and more of a close to home human threat. The relationship between these two and the chemistry these two have on screen together very much makes up for the movie and keeps these characters really likable. So whilst we are never feeling threatened that things are going to go poorly for them, we are at least invested in their relationship. I like how we do get a bit of backstory as to how they met, seeing their relationship bond and seeing the troubles and tribulations they go through in the early part of this movie is definitely one of the highlights. I would say the open sequence as well. It does have a lot of Exorcist vibes to it right down to some of the shots. The opening sequence is everything you would want from a Conjuring movie. It is basically that finale sequence that you'd see at the end of these sorts of movies being shown to us from the get-go, showing us what we have seen before and what we grow to expect from these movies. However, as it starts so strong with that scene and leads into this great backstory between the Warrens, everything after that just starts a gradual decline. I have seen some people claim that this movie is boring and I have to unfortunately say that, while I wouldn't say it's boring necessarily, I feel like the way they strip back demonic threat, it really makes the film 
bland, and I feel like bland can occasionally be a lot worse than boring. Apart from our two performances and the mystery of this, because I will be honest, there is a great mystery of this. There is a great sequence of events as the Warrens are investigating the root cause of the possession that caused the other main character to murder someone in order to get them off getting the death penalty in prison. Come the end of the movie, I can't help but wonder what they do in this that leads to what happens in real life. Even a quick look into the real life case, I found out that in real life, they couldn't feasibly do the devil maybe do it situation. So they got the person off through other means of manslaughter. And end of this film, it didn't feel like the woman did anything really to justify this whole court case sequence of the film. You don't even see the court case. And there is also a moment where they are trying to convince a lawyer to accept that the devil might have been part of this murder. And when this lawyer refuses to believe him, they invite him over for dinner and tell him, hey, come meet Annabelle. And if you don't believe us, then we'll leave you alone. And rather than show that dinner scene, show this lawyer coming to their house. This is like very early on in the film, by the way, so it's not really a major spoiler. But rather than show them coming to the house and getting a nice sequence of events similar to that of Annabelle Comes Home, we just cut straight into the lawyer being on the side and claiming the devil made the defendant do it. It jumps a gun and I feel like there was a great sequence of events and a great scene that has been missed there. This is one of those films where it starts off really strong, like ridiculously strong. It's definitely at least up there with the first two around the beginning. But it just starts a gradual decline and the whole climactic finale does not feel climactic purely for the fact that we are aware of the Warrens being real people, and we are aware that they live to see an old age, so any threat put directly to the Warrens doesn't work. This franchise had to do something different, and they decided to opt in for an action sequence, and that just wasn't it. So overall, The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It, it is an interesting film. I was worried about this going into it, because James Wan was not directing. The relationship between Patrick Wilson and Vera Flaminga are absolutely believable. The opening sequence is fantastic and it does have a nice mystery element to it. But as things are revealed throughout the film and we lead to a more action packed, climactic event, it doesn't work as well as I think the film wants it to work. So, with all that being said, I am going to have to say that The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It, is an okay cup of tea. Thank you very much for watching this review. If you do like what I do on this channel, consider clicking that like button and subscribing to the channel for more reviews like this coming all the time. I know I had a very slow May, but I am back for good this time. I expect a couple of reviews in the next few days, including Cruella, A Quiet Place Part 2, and of course, Nobody, which I'll be seeing later on tonight. Also, if you can get subscribed by the end of the month, I'm in for 300. Hopefully we can get there. And those of you that have been joining my channel during my little slow period, I very much appreciate you and thank you for joining me. But until next time, everybody, my name is Josh. I have been your movie apprentice. And I'll see you in the next video.